aren't gluten-free people mainstream? Because they go against the grain. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you call a gluten-free noodle? You call him an impasta. <laughs> okay, last one, guys. <laughs> and what did the doctor say to the gluten-free patient? He said, I am putting you on bread rest. <laughs> Hi, everybody. And I bring warm greetings in the precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. is Ryan here again with our 59th mnemonic in internal medicine. And, you know, we're in the discipline of gastroenterology. And today we are touching on our beloved celiac disease, gluten-sensitive enteropathy. And the mnemonic is brow. All right. So... Firstly, though, let me encourage you from Scripture, from the book of 1 Corinthians 13. And here Paul is addressing the Corinthian church and speaking about love. But love in the context of exercising spiritual gifts, but just also love in general. And he says in verse 4, chapter 13, Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Wow, what a wonderful description of what true love is. Okay, guys, so celiac disease. So we know that celiac disease essentially involves sensitivity to gluten present in a variety of foods. And the way we remember these uh, the types of grains is in the mnemonic brow. So patients with celiac disease have sensitivity to B for barley, R for rye, O for oats, W for wheat, brow. And the pathophysiology here is that you've got sensitivity to these, uh, to gluten in these uh, grains, which then instigates a T-cell mediated immune reaction to gli gliadin, which causes intestinal epithelial cell death and villus atrophy with crypt hyperplasia and eventually malabsorption in the small bowel. Uh, it's more common in females. It's a ratio of 2 to 3 is to 1. It's associated as well. It keeps company with other autoimmune conditions like type 1 diabetes. You can have dermatitis epitiformis, which is the classic dermatological lesion which keeps company with um, celiac disease. Patients, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Patients often have immunoglobulin A deficiency, liver dysfunction, and small bowel lymphoma, especially if there's no response to a celiac diet. Clinical features of celiac disease include abdominal bloating, especially after inadvertent ingestion of gluten, isolated weight loss, iron deficiency anemia in the absence of gastrointestinal blood loss, nutritional deficiency, osteoporosis as well, sometimes even with osteomalacia, diarrhea sometimes, and liver dysfunction. How do we diagnose it? We look for our beloved antibodies. Um, a Easy way to remember these antibodies, anti-get antibodies, looking for anti-gliadin, anti-endomycel, and anti-transglutaminase. Um, Antibodies, right? Which I, by and large, immunoglobulin A. So, antitranspotaminase has a sensitivity of 94% and specificity of 99% uh, for the diagnosis, all right? And you can also, small bowel biopsy is recommended for confirmation of the diagnosis, in which case you're going to see intraepithelial lymphocytosis, crypt hyperplasia, villus atrophy, and a good response to a gluten free diet. Uh, if you want to, you can also look at the genetics and um, those with HLA DQ2 and HLA DQ8. Um, have a high propensity for development of celiac disease. Once diagnosed, a bone mineral density scan is, of course, recommended, right? For treatment wise, all you advise is gluten free diet, lifelong steroids if the symptoms persist despite gluten free diet, and you want to consider a workup for enteropathy associated lymphoma. All right, God bless you. There you go, celiac disease, guys. And uh, they have sensitivity to brow. God bless you.